Hello BookTube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and today I am announcing a brand new challenge for BookTube. I'm going to be co-hosting a new challenge for the month of March called March Mystery Madness. Now let me give you just a tiny bit of backstory about how this came about. Um, if you have been following my channel, I have mentioned that for the past three years I have been the book sales chairman at our Friends of the Library at my local library. One of the promotions that I came up with early on in my uh, time doing book sales was March Mystery Madness. And now that I'm not doing book sales anymore and I'm doing booktube, I thought, well, I could bring March Mystery Madness to booktube and make it into a challenge. Well, I didn't know if anyone had ever done anything like this before because I was not booktubing until about July of last year. So I searched around on YouTube and I did find a couple of videos that were called March Mystery Madness and it was a fellow booktuber named Troy Towell and a couple of years ago he just decided to name his March TBR March Mystery Madness. When I contacted him he said he had not ever done any kind of a challenge. Uh, that's just what he called his TBR. And so I said, you know, I think we could make this a thing. And just from watching some of his videos, I saw what a great and fun booktuber that he is and that he is a big lover of mysteries. And I thought it would be fun to issue this challenge to the booktube community. So we put our heads together and we have come up with some specific challenges. But then of course we want to just challenge you to read as many mysteries as you like or you want during the month of March and, and throughout the year. And then we can come together as a group and talk about what we read and make recommendations to each other. So for that reason we started a Goodreads group and it's called Mystery Madness. That way if you join the group then we can have uh, discussions about mysteries all year long. We can talk about what we're reading. We can make recommendations to each other through that group and I think it's going to be a lot of fun and then this March Mystery Madness can become an annual event hopefully. Troy Towell is the co-host for March Mystery Madness and his channel will be linked down below and I believe he also has a blog. Now I've definitely picked the right partner for this endeavor because he just took it and ran with it and came up with quotes and, and just whole narratives introducing these challenges. Now I can't even hope to tell you about the challenges with the same flair that he can. So I really want to encourage you to go to his channel, subscribe to Troy, and check out his videos as well because you will be so entertained. And I will though in this video tell you what the challenges are in my own words because I can't do it like Troy. And then um, during the month I'm also going to come back and give you some video challenges and some different things like that so I'm hoping that if you want to participate you will do a TBR video let everyone know what you're reading help spread the word because this is a new challenge this year for booktube and I really want to get the word out you know my subscriber base is not very big at all because I'm still fairly new at this so I'm hoping that you guys will help me spread the word and it'll be fun so be sure you subscribe to Troy if you're not subscribed to me then be sure you do that in fact if you're just watching this video because you've seen Troy's video and now you're coming to my channel. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to watch. Uh, welcome to my channel. I appreciate it and I hope you'll subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned for the entire month of March because we'll be doing some updates and wrap ups and issuing other challenges. Also we're going to use the Twitter hashtag March Mystery Madness. I looked that up and saw that quite a few years ago it had been used by a couple of people in regards to some sort of a a video challenge and so I think it'll be fine for us to revive that hashtag and use it for booktube. So be sure you follow me and Troy on Twitter and I will put those links down below as well and I don't think we'll do reading sprints because this challenge is a whole month long but definitely I know as I finish a book I'll tweet about it and I hope that you'll do the same and be sure you use that hashtag March Mystery Madness so that we will be able to find it. Okay, so challenge number one is to read a food, craft, or hobby cozy mystery. I love cozy mysteries and the food craft and hobby ones I think are so much fun. I love the puns and the titles and just everything about them and a lot of them come with tips for different things, patterns for different things, recipes, things like that. So that's the first challenge is to read a cozy mystery that features some sort of craft or hobby or uh, baking mystery, something like that. Okay, and there will possibly be a video challenge related to one of those books later on in the month. And just to give you some ideas, there's some really fun cozy mysteries that feature food and craft themes. In fact, you could think of just about any hobby that you like and 
look that up and there's probably some cozy mysteries that have to do with that hobby now probably the first cozy mystery series that i ever read even before i knew there was such a thing as cozy mysteries is the chocolate chip cookie murder by joanne fluke i am caught up on these books i have read this entire series and i look forward every february to the new one in fact there's a new one out now and i've got to get on it so these books by joanne fluke are a lot of fun and they have recipes there's a lot of other mysteries that have recipes too. This is a series I just found. I haven't even read any of these. This is the Adela Cooks Mystery Series. It is by Melinda Wells. This is from the Fresh Baked Mystery Series by Olivia J. Washburn. This is another fun series that has recipes. Now maybe you're not interested in cooking, but there are a lot of craft and handiwork type mysteries. And this one, this series is by Maggie Sefton. These are knitting mysteries. I enjoy these a lot. They're a lot of fun. And of course you don't have to be able to do these things to read about them. It can be a lot of fun just to read about something that you have no idea about. So pick up a craft mystery or a baking mystery and see what you think about it. And maybe try out a recipe. Try out a craft pattern. You may have a lot of fun and find a new experience in something that you didn't even know you would enjoy. Challenge number two is to read a mystery whose sleuth is a person of color. Now it may be an African American, it may be an African, and it may be someone from from the Eastern culture. Well, whatever you want to pick. Well, it's first just going to be an African American, but because I am reading the number one ladies detective agency, and I have some of these books and I would love to continue them this month, I'm like, let's not just limit it to African Americans, let's make it, uh, you know, any person of color. I love these books, they are a lot of fun, and I want to continue reading these too. So, I'll book about where the main detective is a person of color. Challenge number three deals with the patriarch and matriarch of mystery writing. And you may not know this. Something I learned from Troy is that Edgar Allan Poe wrote some short story mysteries before mysteries was really ever a thing. And he's got a book called the Masterpieces of Mystery. I checked this out from the library. It has a lot of short stories. So, of course, you can feel free to read this whole book. But there are three stories in particular that uh, Troy wanted to encourage everybody to read at least one of these stories, which are found in this book, The Masterpieces of Mystery by Edgar Allan Poe. And the first one is The Murders in the Rue Morgue. The second one is The Mystery of Marie Roget or Rogette. And the third one is The Purloined Letter. Now those are all found in this book, the uh, Poe's Masterpieces of Mystery. And of course, like I said, if you want to read this whole book, then go for it. You may have already read it, and maybe you just want to um, take a look and reread some of the short stories, some of your favorites. And the other part of this challenge, if you don't want to choose Edgar Allan Poe, is to read something from the matriarch of mystery, which is Agatha Christie. I've got a couple of Agatha Christie books on audio that I will be listening to in my car. Actually, this is one I've owned for a while, Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, this one I just got at the library. It's called 13 at Dinner. And um, then this one, I've had this old copy forever. This used to belong to a friend of mine, and it got damaged, and so she gave it to me. And this is probably, this is my favorite Agatha Christie book that I've read to date. And I've not read a whole lot, but I understand this is one of her top ones. Ten Little Indians. And so the newer title to the same story is called And Then There Were None. But Agatha Christie has some awesome books. So challenge number three is to read at least one of Edgar Allan Poe's short mystery stories or read an Agatha Christie novel. Challenge number four is true crime. Now this is going to be something out of my comfort zone because I'm not sure I've ever read any true crime. When we were just getting started with this challenge, both of us made a list and then we came back and compared notes and true crime was on both of our lists. Now if you don't know where to start, I know that uh, Anne Rule is probably the queen of true crime and so that's where I looked. Um, I just checked this out from the library on Playaway. This is called Green River Running Red, and it is an Anne Rule book. So, no, there are some other true crime writers, but I think that Anne Rule is a good place to start if you're not familiar with true crime novels. All right, challenge number five is another type of mystery that's a little out of my comfort zone, but again, this was on both of our lists, and that is to read something paranormal, a paranormal mystery. Charlene Harris is a good author to go to for paranormal mystery. The ones I have that I'm going to read are from the Aunt Dimity series by Nancy Atherton. In fact, Nancy Atherton is one of my seven collected authors that I've never read, so I'm going to take advantage of this March Mystery Madness to read some Aunt Dimity books. So these are just some ideas for this challenge. Number six, another one of my favorites, is to read a pet mystery. Now there are a lot of cat mysteries to choose from. I myself 
am actually currently right now listening to The Cat Who Saw Stars by Lillian Jackson Braun. The Cat Who series is probably one of the more classic, uh, oldest pet mystery series there is. There are some dog mysteries. I believe Susan Conant is the author of the, the one dog series that I'm familiar with. And of course there are many more. There are horse mysteries. There's, there's some that feature birds and just all kinds of stuff. So just explore around and find a pet mystery that you like. Um, I believe the uh, Rena Mae Brown has some pet mysteries. I've never read those. Carol Nelson Douglas writes the Midnight Louie series. So there's a lot of fun pet mysteries to choose from. And I am planning a video challenge in regards to pet mysteries later on in the month too. So be sure you look for that. All right, for challenge number seven, we're going to send you packing. So we want to encourage you to read a novel that's set in another country or even another continent from where you live because crime happens everywhere. So find a mystery that is set in another region of the world from where you live. Now, of course, you can combine challenges. For example, I've been reading the number one ladies detective agency, which is which features Mara Motswe, who is a person of color, and these are set in Africa. So these books would fit both these challenges. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the choices that people read for this challenge because I personally don't know of a lot of books that are set outside of the United States. So I'm hoping to learn about some more fabulous mysteries about other parts of the world. Now the one I do have that I'll show you as, a, as an example, I've already read this. This is a book I read for book club in January and it's called Child 44 by Tom Rob Smith and this is set in Russia. It's Russian historical fiction and it is a mystery. This is uh, the first in a trilogy so I'm probably going to read the second in this trilogy for March and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, this book I hated it and I loved it all at the same time. It was really a roller coaster ride. So that's just one example. So find something that is set in a different region of the world than where you live and I hope you enjoy it. For challenge number eight, let's not forget the younger set. Now I'm 51, but I enjoy reading books that have younger detectives. Of course, we all know about Nancy Drew, uh, but there's a lot of others. There are the boxcar children. There's um, one that you may not have heard of, Trixie Belden. That was another one from my generation. And the Happy Hollisters, that's another older one. Um, some of the ones from uh, that are a little more modern, Encyclopedia Brown, Cam Jansen. Those are all kid detectives or teenage detectives. And find one of those books that you I think you would enjoy and read it and enjoy um, so let's not leave out the younger set and I would even go so far as to say Theodore Boone Kid Lawyer by John Grisham would be appropriate because even though this is more of a legal story the this does involve uh, mystery so this is a good series to read as well and I hope that you will find something that you enjoy and maybe you read maybe you're an adult like me and you read Nancy Drews as a kid and you haven't even thought to pick one up in all those years go get one and remember what the fun was about. And maybe you are a younger person and you haven't ever read one. Again, go for it. I hope it'll be a lot of fun for you. All right, so I'm gonna list all the challenges down below. And so if you need to come back and refer back to them. Now I noticed that when I was getting ready to film this video, I didn't, that all of these challenges are pretty specific and we didn't really leave any catch-all categories where um, you know you could just take any mystery you wanted to read and make it fit and I know there's a lot of great contemporary authors that might not fit any of these categories but this is what you want to read if you want to read mysteries so what I wanted to challenge you to do um, this is kind of a bonus challenge you of course can combine challenges so that you can make one book fit two or more challenges and that's totally fine so I just want to give you the bonus challenge to read or listen to, of course audiobooks are fine, at least eight mystery books during the month of March. So then if you end up combining challenges, then for the rest of your eight books, you could read whatever you want. If you're reading a series and you just want to continue that series, but they don't really fit any of these categories, then go for it. You know, um, what I plan to do is for the ones that are out of my comfort zone or things that I wouldn't have picked up um, on my own, I have tried to get those on audio so that I can just listen to those as I go throughout my day or in my car and then the books that I have collected, all my cozy mysteries and things like that that I really want to read, then that uh, all my sit down reading time will be with those books. And of course, read more than eight if that's what you want to do. I want to just throw it out there to 
to just make this the biggest mystery reading month ever and I would love to see your totals at the end of the month do some wrap ups tweet about it and tell us how much you did and just really be excited about your success uh, first of all then we want to encourage you to do a TBR video and let us know what you plan to read and please help us spread the word um, Troy is my co-host so definitely go to his video if you have not been to Troy's channel yet please subscribe please check out his announcement video because I guarantee you you will be entertained he has got some really neat quotes for all these challenges and it's just gonna be a lot of fun to watch I can't wait to watch it myself so anyway welcome to March Mystery Madness I hope that you will jump on board and I hope this can become an annual event as of right now we're not planning on doing any prizes uh, we just kinda want to get our feet wet and and get this going smoothly and then if it all goes well then you know if we do this again next year then hopefully we'll be able to incorporate some prizes but as of right now it's just gonna be fun you know you do the challenge you get bragging rights I'm looking forward to an awesome month of March I hope you are too oh and I also wanted to mention that Janie from the bookworms buddy is doing a challenge called why have I not read these books and it's so it's like um, W I Y W H I why have I not read these books so it's like W H I N why have I not R T B yeah that's it hashtag W <laughs> Anyway, I'll link that down below. Um, so that's her challenge for the month of March. Why have I not read these books? Well, I don't know about you, but I can easily combine both of these challenges because I have so many mysteries that have been sitting on my shelf and things that have been recommended to me by my sister, you know, a year or two ago. And why have I not read these books? <laughs> So I am going to read as many of those as I can this month and definitely participate in Janie's challenge as well as March Mystery Madness. And so I want to encourage you to do the same. Go and check out Janie's channel. I will link her video down below where she announces that challenge. And if you're motivated by challenges like I am, if you're a Mysteries fan, you've probably got Mysteries on your shelf that would fit into the into both challenges. And so I hope that you will, will do that and it'll be a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching this video and please let me know down in the comments if you plan to participate and I will definitely go and check out your channel if I'm not already subscribed I will definitely subscribe so that I can see your videos when you do your TBR and I'll be able to follow your progress and I'm just really looking forward to this whole challenge and for the month of March I'm excited so I guess that's all I have for this video I hope you're having a great day read a good book and God bless you